Thanks, Pontus, and thanks everybody for coming out. Um, so I want to give a quick overview about some methods that I've, I'm using all the time in my research. Um, I'm not doing so much research in iterative solvers. I really use them uh, as a tool for solving PDEs. So this uh, brings me to one example that I want to show you. So um, I want to compare performance of different iterative methods in Julia for one example. And the example I want to consider here is a very simple PDE. It's basically a Laplace equation with some right-hand sides. So we might have some boundary conditions, some source term. So it's an elliptic PDE. Um, it's fairly easy to um, come up with a good candidate of a method, which would be a conjugate gradient method after you discretize this whole thing. Um, so the discretization actually is quite easy in Julia, so which, are, which we all like. So uh, in 2D, for example, you have like six lines of code, and there it is. There's your Laplacian. And uh, the reason why I picked the PDE to motivate the example is scalability. So here you see there is a, uh, an integer n coming in, and the n is going to be the mesh size in my example. So I'm considering a regular mesh. So 0, zero 1 is divided into cells, and it's going to be an n-square mesh. So we can scale it up, and we can see how different solvers actually behave um, when you do that. And that's something that I think many people in different applications are dealing with. So those kinds of problems really you want to solve efficiently. OK. So uh, long story short, I'm not going to run the test here. The test is on my uh, GitHub. So you can uh, find the notebook there and run. So I, I ran this for a couple of values of n. So I didn't push it very high. So I just uh, the, the biggest mesh I had was like 700 square or something like that. I did 100 iterations. I made sure that the tolerance is an, on an absolute um, very tight level so that no, none of the methods is going to converge in that, that setting. Um, and I compared three different packages. So one is the iterative solvers package that I think is uh, the most widely known. Uh, one is the Krylov.jl package and one is the KrylovMethods.jl package, um, which I'm basically contributing to mostly. Um, and here you can see that there's actually quite a substantial difference in runtime. So that's really, I mean, it's not like a benchmark.jl time. It's wall clock time over 10 different runs, OK? Um, and every time I run this, I get different results. However, quantitative, uh, qualitatively, they are always the same. So here you can see the runtime as the degrees of freedom goes up. So the good news is all these methods scale linearly. So that's kind of the, the first thing you want to make sure in this application. But there is quite a difference between this red curve, which is iterative source.jl, the black curve, and then those blue curves. So the blue curve, actually, this one, I cheated a little bit. I used um, um, a package called parspmatvec.jl that is a Fortran-based package that we use for having shared memory parallel sparse matrix vector products. So take this, this dotted line here, OK? Because the, the parallel sparse matrix vector products you can use in any of these methods. All right. So why is that? Um, to explain you what I think explains the difference is um, I'm going to pick one example here. So this is a snippet from the main iteration loop in iterative solvers. Um, so you have computed a, a search direction, the alpha. You update your x. So x is going to be x plus alpha times p. Um, you update the residual. So you subtract what you added to the, to the x. And you compute the no, new residual norm. That's a very beautiful code, three lines. Um, no big deal. Um, if you look at Krylov.jl, which was a, a huge or like, like at least a factor of, of uh, 1.5 or so faster than iterative solvers, um, things don't look that nice anymore. So you have uh, direct access to blast routines here to update the X and also to update the residual. So it's the typical question of having a beautiful code or a fast code. And I mean, I'm here to represent everybody who cares for a fast code. So I like this much, much better than what, what's up there. I mean, eventually, I mean, if you can make this up, up, up there fast, as fast as plus, I'm happy too. But for now, I, I go with the second one. And then the remaining difference in runtime is you can exploit symmetry. So you, you, you will know that A transpose times X 
is faster for sparse matrix CSC because of the column compression. So if you use that, and that's what I'm using in my package, I build a function handle that multiplies with the transpose. So this also gives you a little bit of a speed up, which can be quite nice in some applications. Um, so an even worse example here, uh, I will for sure run out of time, is if you use SSOR, so this is symmetric over relaxation, okay? If you use that, uh, which is a stationary method, um, you see this difference here. So Krylov methods uh, is like this. Iterative solvers goes like that. Krylov.jl doesn't have it because technically that's not a Krylov method here. Um, and also here, a nice thing about Julia, you can make SSOR extremely fast and extremely efficient by writing a native Julia code for that. So this is a, a, a plain Julia code for sparse matrix for sparse matrices that uses the matrix format. In iterative solvers.jl, there is really the iteration that goes over all the indices of the matrix, which explains this humongous growth of runtime, okay? So that's also something um, that's nice. Actually, it's, a, it's an advantage over MATLAB. So in MATLAB, I mean, I tested this on my machine. Again, wall clock, clock time, so don't take it, uh, take it with a grain of salt. Um, Krylov methods of JL with, with this SSOR preconditioner is faster and more memory efficient because in MATLAB you will want to extract the upper and the lower part of the matrix and basically double or more than double the amount of memory you need. So there, Julia really pays off. So quite a quick overview uh, about packages. So there are mainly three packages. All of them have their merits. All of them are really good. Um, they implement different methods. Um, and you can see here who implements what. But it's, at this point, quite intransparent in, in for some people maybe to figure out which is the, is the best implementation. Um, I'm going to skip this one, um, which concerns the usability and how to represent a matrix in Julia. Um, but yet to, to sum up, so I see there are three packages doing mostly the same stuff or having the same goals. However, methods are different, so we may want to reach a point where we kind of converge and have like one package that the user can download and when it, he or she writes CG of A comma B, it just does, gets the job done and gets the job done efficiently. Um, there are a few other useful packages if you work in that area. So one package I want to recommend is the linear operators.jl, uh, which is written by Dominic Orban. So it's an excellent package to represent a matrix without having a matrix. So you just define what the linear operation is. And yeah, if you, if you do a lot of sparse matrix vector products and you're really concerned with runtime, you can check out our package over here, which uses Fortran to parallelize that. Um, and yeah, right now I think Jahao and uh, Juan have, have a Google Summer of Code um, going on, so I hope many of these things are uh, being taken care of. And shameless advertisement, I'm giving another talk on Friday about the stuff that I'm actually doing. So all these methods are going to come in and you can see them in action. So thanks a lot. complicated to install for me. So I'm really a Julia or MATLAB person. Well, we make an assumption on the data types. So I assume that uh, I'm only dealing with real floating, or with float64 vectors, because we'd use blast calls all the time. Um, so 
that's also one, one good point actually you're making. So these different packages have, I think, different goals in some sense. So iterative solvers wants to take and like allow the user to use like crazy combination of, of matrices and, and vectors, which is very important for some applications. Here, or in PDEs, mostly people want float 64 or complex 128 operations. So here, this is something we are actually quite using quite a lot. So if you use cryedof methods.jl on an, with an integer vector x, it's going to crash. I can tell you. I should maybe fetch that. Ah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, a data times, I don't know what that meant. Thanks. Good. Okay.